right, so before I go into an explanation of this, I just want to thank Todorua and Battlefishman, who helped with the preprocessor design over here, getting the timings right, and uh, Sugapamo, who's unfortunately I have utterly destroyed their um, bedrock breaking design over here and angled it into something else. So the general design concept of this bedrock breaker is quite simple. We have input line here. We have a preprocessor that takes the input line and transforms it into, um, gradually transforms it into what the breadboard bedrock breaker itself needs. And this bedrock breaker here moves forward one step at a time and breaks bedrock underneath the next piston. So before I uh, go any further, actually, it's probably worth mentioning that all of this is, of course, uh, unnecessary. The timings could be done with pistons easily. We wouldn't need any of the redstone. This was just mainly for setup, and because this video is for a proof of concept, not for a final design of any kind, uh, it works, and that's really what matters. Uh, yeah, so let's go over the design super quick, I guess. Uh, this is the TNT duper. Uh, it's a pretty simple design. This launches the TNT over here. This is a really hacky <laughs> setup. Uh, for aligning the TNT, it gets pulled out, it gets shot into here, and then this piston pushes it out. And it's not actually perfectly aligned, but because there's a certain blast resistance to the heads of the pistons, as that piston head extends, the piston head actually protects the piston from getting blown up. If that wasn't the case, if we didn't extend these pistons right on time, I mean, obviously the machine wouldn't work, uh, you wouldn't create the headless pistons, but at the same time, you'd also destroy some of the pistons, like one in eight or something. But yeah, that turned out to not be an issue because the piston head actually blocks the explosion. Uh, there's a flying machine up here. This is basically the timing flying machine. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, six extensions chained together, uh, which makes it slower, basically. And uh, as you can see down here, we've made the exact same flying machine two more times. So this is another area of optimization. You could easily take this flying machine and hook it up to all the other ones, or maybe just use this one, not even bother with this chain that communicates the signal down here. Uh, and then keep it in sync by just moving these flying machines forward with that flying machine up there. Down here we have really simple setup right here. When this observer gets triggered, this gets pulled forward. It moves the lower redstone block first, which leaves the upper redstone block there to get to uh, continue bud powering the piston. So this essentially just creates buds and also powers the next piston, and it powers it right on time to uh, create the headless piston with the TNT. Uh, this part back here, as you can see, there's a lot of pistons that have been placed down prior to running the machine. These get kind of zippered in by this little extension here. So this pushes these pistons in, and we push them down, and then we essentially just put them in place. And this redstone block, for example, keeps these pistons butted so that when we push the, um, when we push the piston in, this, this piston will be headless, but we won't, uh, we'll update it, but it'll still be powered, so it won't destroy the piston. Uh, this is a... This is the last extension before we really get to the bedrock breaker itself. This just creates headless... This does not create headless pistons. Uh, this, this creates bud-powered pistons, but it does it from above, so they don't update the... Uh, it doesn't bud-power the downwards-facing pistons here. Because if this were to update the downwards-facing pistons, then one of them might extend. Well, if, if this were to bud-power one of the downwards-facing pistons, one of them might extend, and then we would have to prevent these from getting fired, and that's just kind of a mess. So this is just a little bit of a simple extension for creating buds vertically without having to worry about uh, powering any pistons beside it. And then here we have the bedrock breaker itself. So as I said earlier, this is based off of Sugapamo's uh, four-wide breaker design, except we're moving the machine in the opposite direction. Well, not the opposite direction, at a 90 degree angle. So Sugapamo's design uses rails like this, and it has a line, they go like this, and then the machine moves in this direction. But this machine obviously moves in this direction, so we kind of feed the pistons in, but that's not really true because the pistons don't move. Uh, we feed the machine into the pistons. So here we have a little bit of an example. So this is like, if there, if this machine had, if this uh, headless piston creator had been run over here, I create a setup that looks like this. So we have headless sticky pistons here, downward facing pistons, uh, bud powered pistons, and then headless normal pistons. Uh, and then when this machine gets moved forward, it moves these slime blocks into place. This might require a separate video to talk about it, <laughs> if I was going to go into detail about all of the different design difficulties that came with us. 
But basically, this gets pulled forward. We pull forward a bunch of extensions. Eventually, it pulls forward this observer here and this observer here, just at the right time to break the bedrock. Uh, and the bedrock underneath this power piston is, uh, well, it's not powered, it's unpowered. Uh, the bedrock down here will be broken. As you can see, breaking that bedrock did not update this piston because it's currently bed powered by this. Um, we need these three redstone blocks because otherwise, when we break the bedrock here, these pistons would get updated and that would destroy the machine. So that's one of the many things this machine does to kind of hack things together. Another thing, the most frustrating part of this machine is that currently it requires some bedrock to be destroyed just to run it. Um, if you were to build this machine in its entirety and just run it like this, you'd have to destroy a bunch of bedrock. You need to destroy bedrock all the way from here uh, to, <laughs> to over here, which isn't really ideal. Um, but of course, if you, th this entire machine is just essentially a bunch of modules chained together. So you could run this first, and then you could build this up, and then run it separately if you wanted to. And then you would have to just break this bedrock here. Um, pretty sure this piston could be moved forward. I haven't really optimized this design. Uh, there's there's a huge amount of work that can be done, but I have a feeling that if I start working on this again, it won't be working again for quite a while. So I'm just showing it now. But yes, these, these two redstone blocks, I'll just mention why they're necessary in case somebody's trying to improve upon this. Um, they're necessary because these two pistons need to be powered here. This, so the way, the way this design works, the way it breaks bedrock, is as we move in this direction, we have this downwards facing piston here, and we need to power, uh, how does it work again? Yes. We destroy the bud powered piston's head first in the tech. This piston gets depowered, so it's now, it's destroyed. But it's also updated, so it's no longer... You can push things into here now because there's no longer a powered piston block in that spot. And then this piston... Where is it? Here. This piston here... I should probably go into spectator mode. This piston starts to extend. Uh, and these slime blocks have actually been pushed forward. That's one of the first, thing that, first things that happens. It just ended up being easier doing things that way. Um, so this piston gets pushed power forward. It pushes this diamond block forward. And also pushes... This doesn't need to be diamonds, by the way. Any block. <laughs> If, well, not slime blocks and whatnot, but you get what I mean. Uh, it pushes these slime blocks forward, and when they're over here, of course, it's going to push this downwards facing piston. I really see it. This downwards facing piston over. Uh, this piston was destroyed, as I said, so this piston will inherit a block event or something like that. I don't know. I don't really understand this, anyways. It doesn't matter. And this piston also is necessary. But the point is, uh, these slime blocks end up over here. Uh, they get pushed forward one block. And when there's a slime block here, um, if this piston wasn't powered, uh, this this piston would stick to the slime block. And of course, in order to reset the machine, we have to move the slime blocks back. So this ended up being the easiest solution that I could think of. Theoretically, you could bud power the piston. You could put a power source here. There are some concerns with that. Um, you don't really want to update these pistons if you can avoid it. Uh, and if you bud power this piston, you have issues. So it just gets more and more complicated. So I just went with this, this design because if you're building, if you're building this, you're building it in such a way that you're going to be moving it over probably. So you can just destroy like a, I don't know how many blocks is this? Is like eight, seven. Uh, you could just destroy like a seven wide. That's nine. <laughs> you could just destroy like a nine wide thing of bedrock over this in this direction. I mean that's kind of complicated, but you could do it. Uh, and then the entire point of this machine is essentially after you run it, you end up with an output that looks like this. So the machine just keeps going because turn it off. Um, but you end up with output that looks like this. And then you could build the machine here again. And then you just have to move over this piston and you need to move in slabs and downwards facing pistons again. But otherwise, of course, you can reuse all these pistons. Um, that is one of the big things that kind of sets this design apart from other designs like the four wide design. This requires you to place down an extra let's say you're let's say you're breaking a three hundred wide thing of bedrock. This requires you to put down an extra approximately like nine hundred pistons. Is it nine hundred? Yeah it is nine hundred, isn't it? That's a lot of pistons. So you have to put down an extra nine hundred pistons or so. Um but as it turns out if you're breaking a three hundred by three hundred area anyways, um that's about 1%, I think, 
your total value. Like, it's an extra 1% pistons placed. So I don't think it's really a big deal. Maybe it is a big deal. Maybe it's a deal breaker. Uh, but this is really, really fast. And so it works better on servers that have to restart, that sort of thing. Uh, if you're concerned about time, this will run, I think it's about, yeah, it's about 35 game ticks between bedrock breaking. So 1.75 seconds. So if you were using this machine and you somehow had it set up so that it was running constantly at 1.75 seconds per bedrock, you're looking at about um, 40 hours to clear a 300 by 300 perimeter of bedrock. Well, just one layer, so it's not really ideal. And it's still a lot slower than Dragon Enigma. But this is for 1.15, so that's kind of not relevant, I suppose. Um, theoretically, I think you might be able to move it forward faster. I wouldn't. <laughs> uh, I would definitely improve this machine before trying to speed it up. Um, but the way it is right now, it actually works quite well. Uh, it starts moving over before it's actually completed breaking the bedrock, or completed all of the resetting at least. Because really, the start of this is just a lot of timing stuff anyways. So it doesn't matter that we start this before everything's reset. Yeah, and that's the machine. Uh, so I'll run it one more time. So I've just copied the machine over one more time here. We can run it again a little bit slower and maybe get a better picture of what's going on. So over here, we're creating all these pistons. Very, very simple. Um, it's just a little timing, basically. You can slowly zipper in the pistons from above instead of when you're previously placed. They go into place. This will block them. I'll just do a little support. Lag them up here a bit. Yeah, so this machine will block them. Then we have this set up, and now we are moving the Edward Breaker in. Uh, these headless pistons are just because I made a slight mistake in designing this, uh, but that could easily be fixed in a future version. So, this is the main thing here. As you can see, these slime blocks get juggled around a lot. They move in, these pistons get powered and then get moved back almost instantly. Slow it down a little bit so that we can see what's going on. <laughs> this, this diamond block makes no sense to me. Okay. So, we get moved over. This is the start of the cycle. This diamond block has been pulled back already, so it gets pushed forward here. These pistons both get powered, and then basically almost in the next tick, uh, very very shortly after, the sun will start to push back again. Uh, so I guess that's my excuse, so to speak, for this unfortunate design flaw. But it does work, and the more I think about it, the more I think you could work around it after removing the kind of bedrock. So you wouldn't actually need to worry about this at all, but that much at least. Uh, and so that's this design. Pretty happy with it. Has some flaws. <laughs> um, it's definitely slower than it needs to be. You can see there's a lot of extensions going on. Um, this doesn't necessarily mean it's slower than it needs to be. Uh, I think I timed it pretty well, considering we're almost always moving something in the core side of the system here. So, yeah, I think this is... Ugh. Almost optimal. I'm sure you could get it down below 30 game ticks, but I wouldn't want to bother, quite frankly. Yeah. I guess one more thing to mention is that I'm pretty sure you can make this into a 3D... Sorry, 3-way dark breaking machine. Uh, so what you would do, theoretically, uh, and this is just in my mind right now because obviously I haven't implemented it or I would be showing it to you right now, um, this would get stopped at the end. It's a one-way TNT duper, so you would be able to fly back really easily and push it over. So that's already one thing that you can make 3D. Um, this, eh, I mean, I'm sure it's possible. I wouldn't want to do it right now, but you could definitely push this back and push it over. Uh, this machine would be a little bit more complicated to push over, uh, but there are slime blocks almost everywhere here, so theoretically it's possible. I'm not really sure. I don't really want to try it, um, but I'm pretty sure you could do it. And. Yeah, with that you would be able to make, assuming you can push it all the way back, push it over, and you don't have this entire setup with the redstone, uh, I'm pretty sure you can make this three-way, and it would be a very fast three-way design. And if you did make a three-way, um, you would run a flying machine down here that would push these sticky pistons over. So obviously we broke this bedrock here, um, and that's because we made these headless pistons here. 
Uh, but of course, if we want to break these bedrock, or these bedrock, I don't know which direction we would want to push it over. It's already partially pushed over as a consequence of how it runs. Um, we have to push these pistons out of the way. Well, not these pistons, these pistons just have to be powered so they don't stick to the uh, slime blocks. We already pushed push the pistons uh, over here. Yeah, we move this over as a consequence of just things that had to be done to get the machine working. Uh, so you would just actually have to push over these sticky pistons, and then you would push the machine back. Or you would push the sticky pistons over after pushing the machine back if you wanted to make things easier. It's kind of difficult to push this machine back uh, without doing it that way. Yeah, so you would push the machine back, and then you would push it over. Uh, and then you would have to have a repository of facing down pistons and slabs that you would pipe into the middle using another extension to the machine. But at this point, I think it's pretty obvious this machine is kind of a chain of extensions, so I don't think it's a big deal to just add another extension to move uh, replaced downwards facing pistons and slabs back in. Uh, and you would have to move these pistons out as well, or else they get blown up. But that's also not a big deal. Yeah, so that's about it. Um, I could make a more in-depth explanation of what's going on here, but it's not that complicated. It's just system. It's essentially just a very complicated constraint satisfaction problem. Uh, we're solving a lot of problems uh, with moving this entire setup forward. That's about it. Thanks for watching. Alright, so good news, bad news time. Bad news first, video isn't over. Good news is I improved the machine a little bit um, while waiting to upload it. Uh, I realized, you know, I've got a bit of free time, why not see if I can get rid of all of the redstone and all that stuff. Uh, as you can see, I've done that here. So now if we start the machine using this instead of no block as before, TNT drops down. And down here we still create headless pistons, and that's all that really is necessary for this machine to do uh, until we get down over here. So this is still working. I can do a little tick warp. I think it's like close enough. Something like that. Yeah, close enough. Sick. So as you can see, we're still clearing bedrock all the way down to the end here. Much better. Uh, so we've got a nice clean line through bedrock all the way across. It's still moving at the same speed. It's just uh, being clocked by this one flying machine over here. And yeah, thanks for watching.